Welcome to Computer Security Tutorial. Cryptography is based on some specific areas of mathematics, including number theory, linear algebra, and algebraic structures. In this tutorial, we discuss the basics of mathematics of cryptography. Integer arithmetic. Here, we use a set, and a few operations. You might be familiar with this set, and operations, but we will discuss with respect to cryptography. Set of integers. A set of integers is a collection of numbers ranging from negative infinity to positive infinity. Integer set does not include fractions. An integer set is denoted by capital alphabet, Z. As you can see here Z is a set of negative and positive integer numbers and does not contain any fractions. Binary operations. A binary operation performs operation on two inputs and produces a single output. A binary operation has two operands and one operator. For example, A and B are the two inputs for the binary operations and, C, is single output produced. In cryptography, we are interested in three binary operations applied to the set of integers. The three binary operations defined for the set of integers are addition, subtraction, and multiplication. As you can see here, each of these operations take two inputs, A, and b and creates one output c the two inputs coming from the integer set applied to the binary operations also produce an output which is an integer let us consider a few examples of binary operation as you know the inputs to the binary operation can either be positive or negative numbers hence we have four cases for each operation consider the addition operation 5 plus 9 equals 14 5 and 9 are integers and the result produced is also an integer. Minus 5 plus 9 equals 4, and so on. Similarly for the other binary operations such as subtraction and multiplication the results are shown. Integer division. In integer arithmetic, if we divide an integer a, by another integer n, we get two integers, q, and, r. This is the relation between four integers. A equals Q times N plus R. In this relation, A, is called dividend, Q, the quotient, N, the divisor, R, the remainder. Here is an important note, integer division is not an operation, because the result of dividing, A, by N, is two integers, Q and R, hence, we call it division relation. For example, Consider A equals 255, and N equals 11. We can find Q, and R using the division algorithm we have learned in arithmetic back in school. We get Q equals 23 and R equals 2. For integer division we have two restrictions. First, the divisor must be a positive integer, that is N must be greater than 0. Second, the remainder not be a non-negative integer, that is R must be greater than or equal 0. We now have a question. When we perform integer division if A, is negative, Q and R, obtained are also negative. How can we preserve the restriction that R, must be positive? The solution is simple. Decrement the value of Q, by 1, and add the value of N, to R, to make R as positive. For instance, Modifying the previous example as A equals minus 255. We get Q equals minus 23 and R as minus 2. This violates the constraint R greater than or equal to 0. We have decrement minus 23 to become minus 24 and added 11 to minus 2 to make it 9, preserves the restriction on R. We can show the relation A equals Q times N plus R, with the two restrictions on N and R, using two graphs. The first one shows the case when A is positive, the second when A is negative. Starting from zero, the graph shows how we can reach the point representing the integer A, on the line. In the case of positive A, we need to move Q times N, units to the right and then move extra R units in the same direction. In the case of negative A, we need to move, Q minus 1, times n units to the left as q is negative in this case, and then move r, units in the opposite direction. 
you can observe that in both the cases R is positive. Let us briefly discuss divisibility, a topic we often encounter in cryptography. If A is not 0 and we let R equals 0, in the division relation, we get A equals Q times N. We say that N divides A, or, N is a divisor of A. When we are not interested in the value of Q, we can write the relationship as follows, read as A is divisible by N. If the reminder is not zero, then N does not divide A, and the relationship is A times N. Example. The integer 4 divides the integer 32 because, 32 equals 8 times 4. We show this as follows. Consider another example, integer 8 does not divide the number 42, 42 equals 5 times 8 plus 2. There is a reminder, R equals 2 in the equation. We show this as follows. Divisibility has several properties. We will now discuss about them briefly. Property 1, if A, is divisible by 1, then A equals plus or minus 1. Property 2, if A, is divisible by an integer B, and B is divisible by A, then A equals plus or minus B. Property 3, if A, is divisible by B, and B, is divisible by C, then we can say that A is divisible by C. This is similar to the transitivity property. Property 4, if A, is divisible by B, and A, is divisible by C, then A, is divisible by M times B and N times C. Here M and N are some integers. We will not be dealing with the proofs of these properties in this video. A positive integer can have more than one divisor. For example, the integer 32 has 6 divisors, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. We can mention two interesting facts about divisors of positive integers. First, the integer 1 has only one divisor, itself. That is the integer 1 can only be divided by itself. Second, any positive integer has at least two divisors, one and itself. It can have more number of divisors. Greatest common divisor. One integer often needed in cryptography is the greatest common divisor of two positive integers. Two positive integers may have many common divisors, but only one greatest common divisor. For example, the common divisor of 12 and 140 are 1, 2, and 4. However, the greatest common divisor is 4. Hence, the definition. The greatest common divisor of two positive integers is the largest integer that can divide both integers. Finding the greatest common divisor also known as GCD, of two positive integers by listing all the common divisors is not practical when the two integers are large. Fortunately, a mathematician named Euclid developed an algorithm that can find the greatest common divisor of two positive integers, called the Euclidean algorithm. The Euclidean algorithm is based on two facts. Fact 1, GCD of any integer a, and 0 is the number itself. This tells us that, if the second integer is 0, the greatest common divisor is the first one. Fact 2, GCD of a, and b, equals GCD of b, and r, r, here is the remainder of dividing a, by b. This fact allows us to change the value of a, and b until b, becomes 0. For example, to calculate the GCD of 36 and 10, we can use the second fact several times and the first fact once in the last step. In other words, GCD of 36 and 10 equals 2, GCD of 10 and 6 equals 2 and so on. This diagram shows how we use the two facts mentioned to calculate the GCD of a, and b. We use the two variables, R1 and R2, to hold the changing values during the process of reduction. They are initialized to A, and B. In each step, we calculate the reminder of R1 divided by R2, and store the result in the variable R, we then replace R1 by R2, and R2 by R. The steps are continued until R2 becomes zero. At this moment we stop. The GCD of A, and B is R1. If GCD of A, and B equals 1, then A, and B are relatively prime.
we will solve a few examples for the better understanding of the algorithm. Example 1, find the greatest common divisor of 2740 and 1760. In the beginning we have R1 equals 2740 and R2 equals 1760. In the first step, we divide R1 by R2, the quotient is 1 and the reminder, R, is 980. In the second step, we replace R1 by R2, and R2 by R. Hence, we have R1 equals 1760 and R2 equals 980. We divide R1 by R2, the quotient is 1 and the reminder, R, is 780. We will continue these step until R2 becomes 0, hence, the answer 20. We leave it to the viewer to find the GCD of 25 and 60. Extended Euclidean Algorithm In arithmetic and computer programming, the extended Euclidean algorithm is an extension to the Euclidean algorithm, which computes, besides the greatest common divisor of integers a, and b, the coefficients of Bazout's identity, that is, given two integers a, and b, we often need to find other two integers s and t, such that s times a plus t times b equals gcd of a and b this is a certifying algorithm because the gcd is the only number that can simultaneously satisfy this equation and divide the inputs as seen here the extended euclidean algorithm uses the same number of steps as the euclidean algorithm however in each step we use three sets of calculations and exchanges instead of one the algorithm uses three sets of variables, R, S, and T. The variables R1 and R2 are initialized to the values of A, and B, respectively. In each step R1, R2, and R, have the same values as the Euclidean algorithm. The variables S1 and S2, are initialized to 1 and 0, respectively. The variables T1 and T2, are initialized to 0 and 1, respectively. We calculate the value of R as follows. And then form the following exchanges of R in each step. The value of S is calculated as follows, and then makes the following exchanges of S in each step. The value T is calculated as follows, and makes the following exchanges of T in each step. For better understanding of the algorithm, let us solve an example. Given A equals 161 and B equals 28. Find the GCD of A, and B, and the values of S and T. Initially, we have R1 equals 161, R2 equals 28, S1 equals 1, S2 equals 0 and T1 equals 0, T2 equals 1. In the first step, we calculate Q as R1 divided by R2, we get Q equals 5. Calculate R using the equation R equals R1 Q times R2 we get R equals 21. Similarly, calculate S and T, we get S equals 1 and T equals minus 5. In the second step we exchange the values of R1 by R2, R2 by R, S1 by S2, S2 by S and T1 by T2, T2 by T. We repeat the steps until R2 is 0. Hence we have R equals R1 equals 7, S equals S1 equals minus 1 and T equals T1 equals 6. We can verify using the equation A times S plus B times T equals GCD of A, and B that is, 161 times minus 1 plus 28 times 6 equals 7. Now, let us consider another example. Given A equals 17 and B equals 0, find GCD of A, and B. Here, Initially we have R1 equals 17, R2 equals 0, S1 equals 1, S2 equals 0, T1 equals 0 and T2 equals 1. The first value of R2 meets our condition. Hence, GCD of 17 and 0 equals R1 equals 17. S equals S1 equals 1. T equals T1 equals 0. We can verify as follows. 1 times 17 plus 0 times 0 equals 17, GCD of 17 and 0. We leave it to you to solve the given question.